Hello everyone and welcome back to Run It Up, Run It Up number 42. Yes, that's right. We are here today playing a $25 nine-handed sit and go on ultimatepoker.com. Not even playing the slow version we're playing or the fast version. We're playing this slow, luxurious, relaxing. You know, it's a Saturday sit and go. We hang out, we relax, 8-minute levels, you know, not even not even a little bit of a rush. So, uh, yeah, here we are. I don't think I've actually played with any of these guys before, which is kind of strange to say because we've been at this for a bit. Uh, with Queen Jack Offsuit here, I think we have a decision between calling and folding. Uh, I don't know the player at all. Folding is certainly fine. I'm going to decide to call, though, because, you know, hey, <laughs> why not? Can't help myself. Not the best of flops for the Queen and the Jack. Possible we still win this end if flop checks through. Also, yeah, I guess that'd be what it would take. Not this time. All right, so <laughs> just the first loose call and punishment of the day. I'm sure it won't be the last one. Let's lower this a little. There we go. There we go. Now we're ready to go. So, yeah, back on the back on the old video grind. Do the little check raise gets, gets called. Interesting. Uh, Ace of Maui, when he check min raises here, is really representing a, a, a super strong hand because you have to imagine that if he had just like a draw, like 9-10 or some sort of a club draw, that he would probably check raise. He'd be more likely to check raise larger than in check min raise uh, to try to get the other guy to fold if he had a hand that was, you know, good but not great but had a lot of equity against a draw. So, uh, you know, any a hand like... A hand like, I guess he opened under the gun once, so he has to be kind of realistic. But a hand like pocket fives, I guess you're okay with that hand calling and then just blasting on turn because that hand's going to fold on turn so often anyway. Uh, yeah, so I guess uh, not really not really sure what to, what to make of the defense of the check min raise or the check min raise for that matter. It's a $25 sit and go. Anything is possible, right? So here on the grind, we started out today with Three hundred eighty-four dollars. Back on the quest to hit four hundred today, which we can accomplish with a top three finish. Uh, yep, third would be seventeen dollars profit. So yes, that would cut it. Let's see. Let's see if we can pull off the miracle. Chip fortress, right? Chip fortress. Don't give it away. Make them earn it. <laughs> All right. Gonna start out here at the min raise. Ace nine offsuit. Certainly good enough to play for a raise. Action folds through to the ninja in the big blind. What are you going to do, ninja? What are you going to do? Re-raise. All right. Well, we aren't loving it, but we can't fold for 80 chips more. Policy, you know. <laughs> Policy dictates we just can't let that just take it down. 80 chips more, you know. Uh, now he checks, which is interesting. Given how bad our hand is, but how potentially good this flop could be to connect with us, I think I like betting. I think 180 should get the job done. If he has a hand that's like a slightly better ace high, maybe there's a chance that he would end up just folding. Decides to give us the old check min raise business, though, and just puts us right in the cage. So I go, okay, all right, I guess you got it, kid. You did it. The check and the min raise got us, you know? He left the, the bait out there. He put the cupcake in the trap, and we just said, nice, and then punished. <laughs> That's what happened right there. So ace-king offsuit here, going to be definitely re-raising now with a call between it. If there, was no, if there was no other one, no one else had decided to play the pot, we would have at least considered, uh, we would have considered just calling, but definitely going to be re-raising here with a person in between. I think you could have made it like 350. I think that's fine. You could make it even a little bit smaller, like 270 is also probably fine. But I think three and a quarter is okay. Can't be that much different result wise. <laughs> All right. Heads up to the flop we go. Not a bad flop for Ace King. Uh, you know, I'm not loving it, but <laughs> if he didn't improve, <laughs> we're still ahead. And uh, if he has a hand like two sixes, two sevens, we're not in like the worst of shapes anyway. So I assume he's going to check, and we will be wagering. I think it doesn't really matter what we bet here because we're effectively being all in anyway. And I don't think it makes a big difference because if he has a hand like two sevens, he's not check folding no matter what we bet. If he has a hand like ace queen, he may or may not continue. Okay, this is a weird one. <laughs> Certainly not folding now with 360 chips behind. 
uh, you know, it's possible that we're just dead to something, but <laughs> I mean, what can you do? It just, uh, now he folds. All right. <laughs> I mean, it's possible he played his hand completely fine. It's possible. But I'm a little suspicious. Like, I guess what he had was like a hand like two sixes, almost exactly a hand like that, or maybe two sevens. And he was just hoping for a card that came off on turn that wasn't scary. But the problem with his plan is that, let's say he has a hand like two sevens and we have a little bit more chips, you know, slightly more chips. And uh, we have like King Queen in that spot. If we ever get him to fold two sevens on the turn there with like King Queen, it's such a disaster. And he's, he, he'll fold on fives, right? He'll fold on fives, aces, maybe even fold on kings. And, you know, I, I think that he should probably just check raise all in on flop or re-raise pre-flop or once he calls you just can't fold on turn getting five to one probably but uh all right i'll regardless i'll take it went from being one of the shorter stacks to second place chip fortress lockdown poker right <laughs> that's what we're gonna do here don't give it away jay carver come on we need to win a sit and go another trophy for the trophy case the last sit and go we won was 35, seven episodes ago. You know, it's getting dusty over there. <laughs> All right. So tonight is uh, UFC 165, John Jones, Alexander Gustafsson. I'm uh, kind of excited about it. I think it'll be a decent, decent night of fights, although I think John Jones is likely going to be the champion come tomorrow. I think that Gustafsson has a better chance than people are giving him to win. You know, just because uh, people seem to forgot that, John, that even though John Jones is really, really good, Alexander Gustafsson isn't like exactly like a joke. Like, I think that the I thought that Chael, Chael fighting John was far more unlikely to result in a John Jones defeat, and even like Vitor, I thought Vitor was gonna get annihilated also. And uh, both of those guys had, like, moments, although I guess Chell didn't really have a moment. John ripping his toe off in, a <laughs> in some weird corner of the octagon doesn't really count as a moment, I guess. But uh, I think Gustafsson has a chance. Is it a big chance? Nope. But I think he has a chance. You know, he's got the, the striking power and the striking ability to connect. And I think John Jones, you know, if John, John doesn't always go out and fight the most, like, you know, where he's the strongest, like GSP does, right? John Jones comes out very often and fight and, and will wrestle with wrestlers or box with, with, with guys that are stand-up guys. Like, he mixes it up, which is definitely fine, and his strategy plans are certainly better than mine. But, uh, you know, I, I think that there's a chance he'll go out there and strike with Gustafsson, which in a striking game of two professional fighters, nobody should be an 8-1 to one underdog. And that's like Gustafsson, I think, is a seven to one dog right now. So I, I think that, you know, in a striking contest, you, you know, I, I can't say with such certainty that John Jones is going to just be this obliterator, this, just going to go out there and obliterate and, you know, send Gustafsson back to Sweden. You know, like, I don't know if that's going to happen, but certainly going to happen a lot of the time. Just I don't think it'll happen all of the time. Uh, what are the other car fights on tonight's card? Uh, Brendan Schraub, Matt Mitrione, Henan Brow fighting for the interim, once again, interim. The poor guy has been the interim champion for like two years now. Uh, fighting Eddie Wineland. That should be a good fight as well. And uh, a couple other ones. Costa Filippo is fighting tonight. A couple other guys. But uh, yeah, should be a decent night. Decent night of fights. In this end, I believe Ace of Maui opened and then Trainer 1 defended and then there's been some minimum minimum wagers going on here. <laughs> and here we are on the river. Ten of spades. Oh, check, check. Yeah. All right. 7-9, probably not going to take it down. <laughs> okay. King-Queen ships that one. All right. Sweet. Jack-9 offsuit here in the big blind. Probably will be defending because, you know, oh... I guess we're not going to be defending because he made it 200. There is a call in between, though, so I'm tempted. If uh, anybody else throws in chips, we might stick it in there also with... Uh, okay. Nope. I probably would have called if Cronus would have called over there. But uh, he didn't want to cooperate with that. I wouldn't have been thrilled anyway. You're putting in a lot of chips with a hand like Jack-9 offsuit, but I probably would have called. 
Shen decides to lay it down over there. Over to Cersei. <laughs> Not sure what to do. Oh, calls. Ace Jack. Nope. That's a pretty good flop. Just a royal flush draw. Let's see if he gets his Toshiba out and can just drill the royal, though. You know, it's very close. Close to the royal, but no. Unfortunately, just the nut flush, sir. Just the nut flush. So he doubles up there. Don't think I love that call behind DJ Trapper. I mean, if we had seen Kronos in there all the time, messing it up, like messing around in there, like jamming a lot, you know, then we could maybe think about calling there. But given that we haven't really seen him do anything, and it was a 4X, so it's not like he's attacking even like a min raise. He's attacking, you know, they represented strength, represented strength by calling, represented strength by raising so big. You know, I think that you can probably lay down Ace Jack there. Uh, in this situation, I think we have a decision between shoving and folding. You assume that the first player is shoving really widely, and I think there's a chance this guy will call and then fold, right? You think there's a chance that he'll fold to this, so I think I want to just shove, in which case we're heads up with this guy with a lot of overlay, which is perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. So basically we're, we're flipping, which is fine, but we have an extra 300 chips and dead money in there. So you're going to need to sweat a 10, 7, 9, jack, or an ace. That was too many cards. <laughs> you know we're in bad shape when uh, we haven't even finished. We've barely finished the list of cards before the river card is dealt. <laughs> so didn't love our chances there. But, uh, you know, regardless of that, the math was good. We risked 300 to win 1,000 as a 55% favorite. And actually more if you consider that she'll be wider. She'll be wider than that with 300 chips. So... I don't 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 hate don't hate the spot. Gonna start out here with the min raise with the four eight of diamonds. They say no thank you. No thank you. Just the ATM doing his job and just giving us fifty chips. Thank you, sir. Probably gonna be probably gonna be yeah, defending. I'm gonna defend my cutoff here with Jack Six of Diamonds. <laughs> I've had friends that talk like that, that say things such as that, you know, defending cutoffs, stuff like that. Uh, I think I'm going to start out with a raise here. I know we were saying lockdown poker, but I don't really want to limp because I feel like limping is going to just allow button limp behind, small blind completes, big blind checks. I'd rather just raise, get heads up in position with a hand that's decent against his limping range. Pretty good flop for us with uh, the old jack sixer. Certainly can't complain with the old 6-5 deuce. Going to start out with a bet here. If he does anything aggressive, we would have just not folded. The hand's just too good, you know. If he had check shoved, we wouldn't have loved it by any means, but we would have had to continue. If he had check raised smaller, I would have been more concerned, but probably not concerned enough to lay that one down. Firing in there with a little old... Ooh, nope, not... <laughs> that would have been a bit of an overbet. <laughs> 1,012 dealer. Nope, not quite. What the fuck's up over there? Thinking, Thinking deeply calls that is his real name apparently uh all right i guess we just fold now to cersei's big blind cersei's big blind reshove okay can't really do much to combat it but we certainly have to open our hand is just too decent not to we have seen her reshove a couple times i guess Shove the shove the a seven doesn't really count. Call with ace jack. I guess it's I think it's fine to open. The hand the hand's not like we open jack four offsuit. Gonna just muck muck that one over there. So yeah, things have been uh, things have been kind of less crazy in the last couple days. I mean things were absolutely insane for the last few weeks, even for the last two months I would even say. But uh, in the last couple of days, things have been a little bit quieter here as we're kind of figuring out the next step, you know, kind of positioning, you know, figuring out what, what, makes, what makes sense to do next and all this stuff. So it's awesome, though. You guys will be excited when you hear about all this craziness happening. It's like it's like growing it up on steroids is what I think might be coming next. So uh, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. But uh, I've been trying to work hard, you know, I mean... I uh, I've, I try to say I try to do my best to say yes to most opportunities that I'm offered. Six seven probably not the winner. Full house will take it. You know I've I've uh, found myself in a lucky situation where I've got several opportunities on the table and I'm just like trying to trying to select the one that provides me with the most happiness to value ratio lowest ratio. 
regardless, I'm looking for <laughs> I'm looking for something that makes me happy and makes sense for my. I guess I have some sort of a career now, so <laughs> I've been trying to make that all work out. We'll see if I get it right. So it looks like looks like there was a limp or something, and then raise, and then cold call, and then shove, and then call, and now we're flipping, and he's gonna need a nine. <laughs> that's that's this hand for you, in case you missed it. Looks like we've lost our first player, trainer one. Unfortunately, eliminated in ninth place. We'll be taking home zero dollars in prize money. And it's quite quite unfortunate. Rick Moranis over there. <laughs> I'm sure he's really bummed. Queen Jack offset under the gun. I'm tempted to raise, but you know, lockdown fortress poker dictates that we just fold hands like that under the gun. You know, I mean, if we had 10,000 chips, okay, 5,000 chips even. But with 1,700, you don't really want to invest 200 chips in the situation where we're just going to too often run into somebody who has a bigger hand than us and just say, I'm all in. And then we just have to fold and we've just sacrificed, you know, 15% of our stack for nothing. So just let that one go there. The old jack three ball in the big blind. Likely going to fold to a raise, but, yep, yeah. looks like we'll be folding for sure. You would think that this, this will go all in because CJV has already put in 300 of his 700. So, mathematically speaking, you think he would be inclined to call? Just saying. Live your own life. Make your own decisions, you know, but all right. He's going to find himself in pretty poor shape. Could have actually folded given... Uh, that this particular matchup drawing dead on the turn thanks for playing see you later sorry for your unfortunate mishaps <laughs> all right seven players remain three players cash somehow we're in like middle of the pack with 1600 chips i think the plan here if it folds to us all right never mind if if it had folded to us, everyone is so nice. There's like three GGs in the chat. Nice hand, GG. I guess you guys can't see because uh, I can't move the thing up yet. Uh, maybe I can actually. I, uh, how do you like that? How do you like that? Now you guys can see for yourselves all the politeness. All right, so in this hand, I believe under the gun raised, <laughs> under the gun been raised, uh, dag the b, called, call, call, and now just shoves for pot, which seems all right. You'd think that it'll get through at this point because given that the first player checked, you would think that he's probably not able to check and then call for 1100. But he's thinking about it, I guess. False. All right. <laughs> Maybe he's just a bit of an attention whore. <laughs> Thinking about it or being an attention whore. So this is the very start of my day. This is one of those morning casts where I feel like uh, sometimes I need a little bit of a reminder that I can't do a morning show, you know? So I like to wake up and just be like, let's do a morning show. And then I'm like, oh my God, you know, it's just not the same. I love the late night casting, the late night streams, late night casts. Those are so much more fun, you know? Such more, they're unpredictable, you know, who knows, who knows what'll happen. If you guys didn't check it out yet, go check out for a couple of days ago. Uh, okay, let me raise. Uh, check out the, I did an interview with Dan O'Brien. We did a little sit down, talked about life, stuff like that. Audio is a little messed up, but you know, hey, it's my first time doing a guest. I'm all by myself, you know, I messed it up. What can you say? And uh, there's also a run it up, in case you didn't see that, run it up number 41. That would be also available on the internet if that interests you. I'm in raising up here, pocket eight. If somebody shoves, we just have to call eights two. Way too good. Looks like everyone is smart enough not to, not to bother. They're all just like, up oh, two eights? No, no, thank you. Gonna fold this three seven offsuit. Blinds will be going up in two minutes. Yep, that's right. Two minutes away. So the blind's going up to 75150. I'm pretty happy to have 1800. I mean, I'm not thrilled about it, obviously, but we're pretty much fine. You know, we can break even for the next 16 minutes and still have 10 big blinds, you know, at the end of that level, at the end of 100, 200. Weird hand here, min raise, re raise, cold call, call. 
I would think that Dagda has a hand that's like either ace queen, ace jack, something like. All right, we're gonna find out. Ace king, ace king. So they're gonna get chopped up here. Nothing too interesting. I would think that that I mean Dagda probably should have just shove preflop just to avoid making mistakes post flop when it comes like you know nine seven three and then somehow he check folds the best hand, but worked out for him this time. I don't know if you guys can hear that outside, but <laughs> just some just someone cleaning the hallway, smashing the vacuum into the door. <laughs> no big deal. Don't don't worry or nothing like that. So it looks like we'll be in the big blind when blinds go up, which is fine, fine enough, I suppose. Not that big of a deal between 100 and 150. Looks like we might actually be lucky enough to dodge the old big blind increase. Nice. All right, so check nine suited here. If somebody min raises or makes it even like three x, I'll probably end up defending. Certainly going to defend for one and a quarter more. The math just dictates we're getting three to one. So unless somebody else re raises, we're going to end up calling. Let's see a flop dealer. All right, interesting flop. We have flop the purr, which is always nice. We've only got three times the pot left behind, uh, so it's not like we've got a super deep stack decision here. I'm pretty sure I'm just going to check raise all in. You know, all the player did was raise pre flop and then bet. Our hand is just is pretty good. You know, certainly we're certainly likely to be the, have the best hand. I don't really want to check call and then what? Hope for a brick. Hope for a card lower than a ten. I mean, I think it's just we're in bad shape. Probably oh, flipping is not the worst. Getting to dodge a diamond or an ace. All right, dodged. We did it. So yeah, I think that uh, that flop check raise all in just has to be what we do there. You know, we're just too likely to have the best hand, and uh, we're also too likely to make mistakes. I think if we just like check call and the turn is, you know, any card that doesn't improve us, we're like uh, not really sure. But uh, yeah, so this is another interesting situation because DJ Trapper has made it 400. And then this player is shoved. I think I'm going to just fold. I mean, I think we have the best hand against DJ Trapper a lot, but this should mean strength given how much this person raised for. I, I think that this should mean strength, but it's possible we have the best hand, and it looks like we were actually, well, <laughs> probably not winning on that flop, but uh, but yeah. So I, I, felt, I felt that there was a decent chance that we were ahead of DJ Trapper there. Interesting to note that DJ made it 400 with Jack-9 suited. So that's, that's a thing that you wouldn't expect most people to do. And if you're in the note-taking business, and you should be as poker players, if uh, you're in the note-taking business, you would certainly want to note that because that, that, you know, I would usually interpret that 4x to mean, sometimes to mean more likely strength. And clearly, it, it wasn't strength in that case. So uh, definitely something worth noting. Now they're all in here. All right. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Drama completely ended very quickly after the start of this. I think I'm fine with it, though. I mean, like, keeping stacks flatter and more shallow is better for us when we have a chip lead like this. Again, it's not a super significant chip lead. It's not like we have 8,000 chips. But with uh, 3,800, we're going to be... We're going to want to put pressure on people. You know, we're going to want to kind of just get in there and put pressure on. But I don't think this is a good spot to do it. We've seen this player already kind of attack a little bit. King-5 is kind of a bad hand to do it with, although I guess it's fine. Uh, actually, I think I'm going to actually raise here. I wasn't going to. I wasn't going to, but then I decided that we could get away with it. You know, I, I think that... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Another another one of these great Jay Carver decisions. <laughs> I think it'll be fine. No one will mess with us, right? Oh, just a call and a shove. Oh, uh, okay. Well, we did run into it, but you know, I think I think we probably I think it, it's got to be marginally close to fine, right? I mean, certainly it's not fantastic, but how bad could it really be, right? How bad how bad could it really be, truly? You know, it's a king. We have a king. How bad could it be? We're raising. <laughs> I don't know. It's probably very marginally close to fine. Certainly going to be raising here with king 10 suited. We're going to fold to shove some either of these players just because they've got so many chips and our hand is just not good. But this is certainly a fine result. 
Flopping the toppest of pairs is also a fine result. We're going to start here with a bet. If this player does anything aggressive, we will not be folding. Hand is just too good. Too good to fold. Too good to fold. All right. Seems like we've got the best hands here by a likely high amount of margin. I would be rather shocked if he somehow had us beat with a set, and that would be kind of impressive. Going to bet twice here, though. I mean, I think that it's hard for him to continue on a king turn card. We could argue to check back, but I, I don't really want to, like, just check back. I kind of want to get value out of him right now. Pretty nice run out for us. I would think we have the best hand if he open shoves. Oh, God. Does he have a set, really? <gasps> no. <laughs> I was a little concerned because he played it like he had a set so perfectly. Like, he's just trapping us. He's just, you know, check call, check call. I'm all in. You know, like, I'm certainly concerned, but can't can't be too concerned with the old top two pair. I think we just fold the old Jack Deuce. Chip Fortress. Come on. Let's do it. $100 for first. We need it. You know? Back on the run it up grind. Run it up 42. Come on. You know? The people have been desperate jonesing for run it up you know the conor mcgregor luck of the irish let's just do it put it all together just ship it you know start off the saturday right that would be that would just be fantastic so five players five players <laughs> remain standing between us and glory and another golden trophy for the trophy case you know why we're all here playing trophies for the trophy case you know all right, so blinds will be up in three minutes to 100, 200. Feeling pretty good about our chances here, but I'm not saying nothing. <laughs> I'm not going to handicap our chances because that worked out so well for us last time. Ace of Maui gets a double up through folding through, which is rather surprising. We will definitely be calling if either of these short stacks ships it in our face and it folds around to us. If uh, DJ Trapper calls, it's the weirdest thing for us to deal with because we might have the best hand, but I'll probably end up just folding. Definitely calling heads up against Ace of Maui. Looks like we're going to need a 9 or some chop cards. It's not a bad start to the chopping. Any 5 or 10 will also do it. Oh, oh, oh. All right. We're on a mini heater, boys and girls. We're on a, a mini, mini heater here. The luck of the Irish is finally, finally heating up again, you know? That's what we're doing, the Conor McGregor heater. All right, if it folds to us, we're certainly going to be playing all of our chips. I play all my chips. Yep, thank you. Thanks, thanks for the big blind, sir. Button over to us. Jack four suited, certainly going to come in for our min raise. If the ATM decides to put all the chips in the pot, we have to call. Don't have a choice, given that we'd have to, mathematically speaking, we just have to call. I want to slow down a little bit on my raises because I think that raise was actually a little too fast. You don't want it to look so automatic because if you're representing an automatic raise, you're not exactly representing strength, you know? So I want to be a little bit more careful with not just raising like instantly. But uh, yeah, I think raising slowly is still a fine play in a spot like this. Interesting situation. We could arguably check back on this flop. I think that would be fine uh, with the hand we actually have. But I think I'd rather bet just on the off chance that he can fold a hand that's like some bad ace high, a better king high. I don't want to check back and have him just bet with a hand like 8-7 suited on like a deuce turn card and then have us make a very big mistake. So I think all in all, it makes most sense to bet this flop than to check back. But certainly close. I think I'll just fold here. It probably will buy us a little bit of credibility to fold a hand. <laughs> that's right. I think it'll buy us some credibility to fold a hand. That's the that's the tactic. That's the tactic on that one. Ten nine offsuit here in the big blind. Gonna have to call against this shove if nobody else interferes. Our uh, our job our job as executioner would have been would have been offered to us again, but looks like we'll probably end up just folding here. I mean, we have to call 560 chips to win, like, 1,600. So, mathematically, it would have been close. 
Looks like there's going to be a pretty big pot here. Somebody else will be spawned as the second place chip counts. Chip. Yeah, so, uh, second chips. <laughs> All right. Ace-8 is looking pretty good here. Ace-8 looking very good there. Unfortunate for Pocket Jacks. He was so far ahead and uh, didn't work out for him. Actually, DJ Trapper wins a pretty sizable side pot. So uh, not even that second place chip count that I thought would be spawning. This is actually, again, probably better for us with three spots paying. You know, if, we, if they had all went to this guy, we would have already been in the money. And I think we actually will be able to put some pressure on given that, uh, how the chips are laid out. Or at least that is the plan. If T11 decides to raise, we're just going to fold. If he decided to do something else, uh, I guess even call, I would have folded. If he had folded, though, he would have attacked the big blind for sure. I wouldn't have shoved, though. I probably would have made it like 4, four 450, something like that, and uh, just tried to put some pressure on him. But looks like he's got a decision, or he's just doing his attention horror tanking again, you know, which is fine. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. Maybe he's just not there right now, making himself an omelet over there. It's Saturday morning, you know, UFC tonight, getting all excited, making his John Jones, Alexander Gustafson omelets, you know what I mean, you know? <laughs> he's just getting in the spirit, you know? Maybe that's what he's doing. Going to definitely raise it up here. You know, DJ Trapper shouldn't be coming at us too widely, although he definitely has several times in the past. I think that he's got to kind of tread somewhat lightly, given that we can just end his life here, tournament life, so to speak, and he would get nothing for it. But looks like he sees right through the ruse this time and just punishes us. Get out of here, Jay Carver. Go back to, go back to Ireland, you know? That's what he's saying to us. All right. What can you do? I could have arguably raised this as well, but uh, with the big blind, the shortest stack, he's most inclined to shove on us, and our hand is pretty bad. You know? Even even we can sacrifice the old six-deucer every once in a while. So in huge news, huge news, uh, I am somehow haven't got to yet. Oh, I guess we should talk about this, <laughs> this all in first. Queen 8 looks like going to be a chop unless something low hits. Chop it up indeed. Uh, anyway, back to my huge news. I'm in my promo series for Silver One. That's right. If you know what that is, you're excited. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. But uh, I'm very excited. It's the highest ELO I've ever had in League of Legends. I'm finally about to promote myself, maybe, to the tier below gold. That's pretty cool. I'm pretty stoked about it. I don't know about you, but I'm stoked about it. Uh, I think we can actually defend here. It's a weird spot to defend, but I think we actually can. Uh, the fact that he didn't shove makes me slightly suspicious, but, you know, slightly. So, in this case, I think I would just, I'm just going to just check raise all in. If I check any checks back, it just means we have the best hand. If he ships it, I'm certainly calling. I think the scariest thing he can do is bet, like, five and a quarter. Against this, we have to just go all in. We just don't have a choice. There's just too often we have the best hand or something like that and he's just putting max pressure on us or at least attempting to just two kings huh we're gonna need a 10 8 7 or 5 the old Conor McGregor luck didn't work out for us so I I think that I I didn't think his hand was as good as kings because he bet 1100 into that pot but it didn't make a difference anyway we're just too shallow to do anything else besides check raise all in like you know you can definitely you can definitely look back and say okay because he made it 500 and didn't shove that probably was a sign of strength pre-flop and it definitely was I definitely I'm definitely I definitely agree with that 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 made it slightly more likely but given that we haven't seen this player for long enough I don't think we can actually say that for sure in this case I think we have to shove I don't love it but we can't call and then fold to to that bit to the big blind and we're so likely to have the best hand here with ace nine suited we're all in hopefully he doesn't just call with like aces and we're just like oh, out and forth Side duck. <laughs> no, not this time. So we are decently ahead. Gonna need to sweat a four or a deuce ball. Or a five, looks like, otherwise. All right. That would be the old five ball. So we've got ourselves a four way tie. Okay, we got it in bad ones and then very good ones. And 0 for 2 in both of them. All right, so we're going to have to tighten up slightly here because we're no longer the chip leader, although everyone being tied does kind of open us up to potentially be aggressive. But 
I think that given the given the fact that the sit and go represents you know like we have only like 15 buy-ins i think we have to be slightly tighter i think we can raise this though this hand is certainly good enough to open for a min raise no one's been like super super shovey you know what i mean if everyone had been like perfectly reshoving then i would have been way more tempted to just fold pretty good flop for us here i actually think that in almost all cases so 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 often in poker you guys see me bet on flops like this and i usually do but because of the fact that i don't really think that this player can just continue too often like they're just it's just so hard for this player to continue here that i'm going to try to check back and give him an opportunity to try to bluff you know if he has an ace we're going to get some value out of him no matter what and if he doesn't i want to give him an opportunity to, to at least slightly catch up or try to bluff on the turn it looks like he's not going to cooperate, though, and I'm going to try starting with a bet of, like, 300. I could have even bet 200. That would have been fine also. His most likely result is going to be just a check fold here, but, uh, you know, I think we tried to give ourselves the best chance of winning more chips by checking back flop. Didn't work out for us this time, though. Ace four of clubs. This is going to be kind of an interesting hand because we're, we've got to have a decision between calling and shoving. Our hand, mathematically speaking, is going to be a slight favorite over what he is min-raising, for sure. But I don't really want to shove and necessarily just run it. He did make it 500, not a min-raise last time he was super strong. With def this definitely is an indicator. I think we just shove, to be honest. I think our hand is just too good. We also, uh, we don't actually cover him, but I think it's fine. It's got to be fine to shove this here. Mathematically speaking, I believe it's fine. But... I guess, arguably, all right. <laughs> I was like, if he just like tank calls with the fours, it's gonna be so sad. But thankfully, <laughs> thankfully we avoid the fourth place sadness. I mean, ICM wise, maybe that's actually just a call, but we're all basically the same stack at that point. And if we shove and win, we can be a little more aggressive in future spots like this one. Not that I'm like thrilled about this spot, but we haven't really tested this guy out blind versus blind yet, so maybe he'll just forfeit his blind to this or just call and then fold that post flop. I usually wouldn't do things like this, but we haven't even tried. We haven't, we've yet to have a blind versus blind situation against this guy, so I don't know how he'll react to it, but I thought there was a good chance that he would fold. And looks like, looks like the, <laughs> my, my miraculous guessing powers have served us once again there. King deuce here on the button. I think we're going to raise. Don't see why not. Small blind's been kind of tight. Big blind's still got a decent amount of chips. Don't think he's going to just throw it away here. Don't think he's going to just jam in with any two or anything like that. And I'll happily play a pot in position against this guy. Pretty good flop for us just because it's unlikely to have improved him. If he bombs it, we just fold. That would be very annoying to have him just bomb it. <laughs> I wouldn't be happy about it. If he just bets like, you know, 800. <laughs> okay, I guess we would have just folded. But thankfully, he doesn't give us that business and gives us the opportunity to just win this pot here. All right, worked, worked well enough. Blinds went up to 100, 200 with a 25 ante. So not really significant in terms of an increase gonna just fold I think I'm gonna just let this one go so we've done a decent job recovering from our from our low peak of like 3,000 chips or whatever it is that we had the other the other three have pretty much just equally sunk as we've picked on every one of them <laughs> we're an equal opportunity poker table bully you know that's it we'll just do whatever it takes gotta get in there all right so glad we did fold this one T11, the ATM on ATM violence over here. Looks like T11 will get that one through. All right, over into the big blind we go. The old queen deucer. Probably will defend this to a min raise. Not going to defend it to a 1200 chip raise, though. <laughs> no, thank you. You can have it for 1200. All right, pressure's on now, boys. You can feel the tension in the air and run it up headquarters. You can cut the tension with a knife. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I think I would like to just call here. I don't think there's any reason we have to do anything like raising. 
you know, we're going to raise, he's going to call. Why not just check? We'll see a flop. Friendly poker. Pretty good flop for us because we almost for sure have the best hand because what in the world does he have? He never has an ace or a king or anything like that. I really hope he calls because I'm so sure we have the best hand. Now, it's possible that the nine makes it that we do not have the best hand turn card anymore. It's possible he just has like a nine of some sort. But I actually think that we have the best hand here a very good percentage of the time with our queen high. Uh, so the question is, does he ever fold a better queen high? Does he ever fold queen jack or queen 10 to a bet? Probably not. Um, does he ever call with like jack high or something like that? That's possible. Let's see if he does. <laughs> Let's see if we can get value from jack high here. Come on. Just don't make it 1200. That's all I ask, you know? Just call with your jack four. No, he says no thank you. Well, the good news is we almost for sure had the best hand, and uh, we tried. We tried to get value. They just didn't cooperate. You know, what can you do? King four offsuit here. I think we can attack. Don't love it, but I think it's fine. We're risking 400 to win 400. We're going to win that often enough, even though this has been the, the worst player to open historically on. I think that the sample size just isn't big enough to just fold here, getting the price we're getting now with antes and everything included. But uh, once again, Cersei, Cersei punishes us just as, just as she should do. I guess we can just fold this now, but maybe not actually because of the fact that this player is the shortest stack and will be probably force these two to be a little bit tighter. I think this is fine to hop in there and attack. Again, 400 to win 400. I think we can get away with it, but if it doesn't work out, we will have lost 800 chips. Looks like we have at least have a shot at the flop. So obviously not the best flop for King-6 offsuit, but I'm not planning on checking back. If he just bets out, we're just going to fold, but I think, uh, I think I'm interested enough to bet at least here once. This certainly will work often enough, and once in a while, he actually will just check call with hands that are worse than ours. He'll call with like Queen-Jack, 7-8, once in a while, he'll call with like just like a queen eight with a queen of spades. Like once in a while, we do actually have the best hand with our king high anyway. So I definitely am happy happy to bet that there. Ooh, maybe we get a little walk. Maybe walk it out. Perhaps. Nice. That's it. We suggested it to the universe, and the universe said, "All right, you got it, kid." A little walk for you. Why not? Three more minutes till blinds go up. These these uh, definitely gonna shove here against uh, against the uh, the short stacked ATM with a hand this good. I uh, I think that there's obviously some downside to doing these longer sit and goes. That being that this video has already lasted for forty something minutes <laughs> and it's only four handed, but. Uh, I, I do like it as a player, obviously, a lot better because we have so much more room to make deeper stack decisions. And uh, you probably, you guys probably like these better anyway. I think that there's just more interesting decisions and less of the push fold stuff you get in the turbo ones. But let me know in the comments below either way because I'm definitely interested to see. I know that there are people that like sit and goes more, like cash games more. So I definitely try to divide it up and mix it up, despite me like slightly liking cash games more. I think both are are fine. So what the fuck's up? Gonna need a king, otherwise he's gonna be out of here in fourth for nothing. All right, three players remain. We've made it in the money. Whew. Pressure's off, you know. Well. Pressure's only slightly off, but we've at least made $17.25, which is always sweet. So, yeah, now it's just a matter of who gets the crown, who gets the title, where, who gets to put the trophy in the trophy case. God, I hope it's us. You know, for our, for our idol Conor McGregor's sake. All right, let's see a flop here. Don't see why not. Pretty good flop for us. If he bets, we'll probably call. If he checks, we'll probably bet. The open mucks, that's also fine with me. <laughs> I think that covers all the options. Going to start here with a bet because we probably have the best hand, and I'd like to get some value for that. He just says no thank you, and all right, we'll take it. Bonds will be up in one minute to 150, 300 with a 25 ante, so pretty significant increase, actually. 
If T11 decides to ship it in here and the button will just fold with Queen Jack, although maybe like slightly favored, it's very slightly. And he's been pretty tight actually, so I, I think Queen Jack just gets mucked here. If he limps, uh, yeah. We will start off with a limp here. Don't see why not. Nothing he can do to get us to fold this hand preflop within the realm of reason. He could make it 1,200. That would do it, but nothing uh, nothing reasonable that he could do there to get us to fold. So I'm slightly concerned that he has just a hand like King Deuce, and I don't really want to opt into a 35-65 here, you know, with uh, way the worst hand, but I'm happy to call. Once in a while, a club will come off, and they'll buy us some free cards, or a queen or a jack will come off, and they'll make us the best hand. Or we could always just do the Toshiba thing and just fucking drill it. Oh, hi there. That'll do it. That will do it. All right, locked up uh, 62.50 for a second, but we're not going for a second. We're going for the belt, boys. We're going for the gold. We're going for the gold, the gusto, the glory, you know? All right, we're going to start off here. I'm all in. 11,111, sir. I'm all in. All right, we're flipping it out. That's a bad start to a flip with Jack-7. Surprised that he would just call there with Queen-Deuce suited. That seems slightly ambitious, but... uh <laughs> worked out for him this time and now we're two to one chip lead okay well there's always that blinds will be up to 150 300 very next hand which is one of the reasons that i wanted to shove with uh, the jack seven but it's clearly just fine mathematically speaking going to or at least very close to fine i'm pretty sure that it's fine though flopped a spade draw here could have arguably let out and bet like 300 Certainly would have been an option. Uh, given that we have two undercards to the board, I don't really want to check raise, get it in, because if we get it in, we're getting it in very badly. But I think there's actually a decent chance that he can just fold here. Man, maybe I should have check raised. I, if I had really thought about it for longer, I, I might have ended up check raising, but I kind of was planning on check calling and didn't have enough time to really think about if there were a lot of hands that he would check back or bet fold. So at this point, we obviously have to take a take make a make a take a stab at this because we have eight high, and there's a chance that he'll just fold ace high, a nine, you know, plenty of things that I thought there was a chance he would fold. Looks like that he most likely checked back a ten though, so we do end up losing that one. It's evened up, even it up. Come on, come on, Conor McGregor avatar, let's do it. Come on, you know, what are you doing to me here? Don't don't even think about it. I'm not putting a second place trophy up on this wall, you know? Come home with the belt or don't come home at all. <laughs> That's right. All right, going to start here with a bet. If uh, our opponent check raises or puts a lot of money in the pot, we're probably going to have to go with it because our hands is just too good not to. If he has, like, you would imagine that he can put a lot of money in the pot with a whole bunch of pair and straight draw type of stuff, all of which now beats us, unfortunately. I think I'm going to check back on this turn here. I think that if he has two pair or straight, he's obviously never folding. And if he has a hand like queen six or, you know, jack four, those hands aren't going to call anyway. So I'm fine with checking back and then making some decision on the river. And him checking makes me feel like we probably do have the best hand here. He could have a hand like four or five, but I think that we're at least like 65, 70% to have the best hand here. You wouldn't think that he would have a straight and check twice. So, yep, that did work out pretty well for us, at least. Don't think we were going to get more chips than what we got, though. So, pretty happy with that. Also, pretty happy with the ace and the jack. If our opponent plays this pot, we'll probably be all in. If he limps, we'll just raise. If he raises, we'll probably be shoving. But maybe not against the min raise. <laughs> he heard all, of our <laughs> heard all of our plans as we were plotting over there. It was just like, all right, I guess I'm out of here. <laughs> Going to start off here with the min raise, obviously, with a suited hand. Can't see a reason not to. He has really not shoved a ton preflop. He's been more of the calling type, which is fine for me, especially in a heads-up match like this. Going to start here with a bet. I think 500 will get the job done. Some pretty good turn cards, actually, if he calls here. Any spade, three, deuce, five. 
even like a six or an ace are both are all good for us. Back to having a two to one chip lead. We've repaired some of the damage here. With 10-5 offsuit, I think I would have defended a min raise, but probably not much more than that. This hand is pretty poor, and he's been kind of tight, so certainly going to be attacking here in the button. Haven't got a reason not to. <laughs> now I have a reason not to. <laughs> now he's given us a reason not to. There you go. Four minutes till the blinds go up to 200, 400. So we'll want to be at least around these chip counts before then. If he min raises here, we will defend a 10 9 off. So you don't see, don't think we're going to fold a hand as good as 10 9 to a min raise. It's interesting that he's folded like three of the last five times he's had the button, though. Certainly worth noting that he's probably slightly on the tight side. I know he just shoved a little while ago, but I don't think he's, I think he's shoving like pretty good hands generally speaking like I think he's defending hands like 7-8 suited and not shoving with them which makes this certainly fine to attack with given that we're risking you know we're risking 450 to win three four you know we're, we're risking we're, we're risking 450 to win more than 450 which is always nice ace eight offsuit probably going to be shoving if he min raises I know he's been tight but our hand is just too good you know he's going to raise lots of kings stuff like that even against the limp I think he's so often limp folding that uh, we should just attack here and take the free 650 chips that are already out there I'm all in Ooh, what do we run into here oh okay interesting turn of events here we're going to need an ace or a ten so close, so close, but not quite. Anyway, so we were <laughs> we were kind of trapped there with the old king eight, I suppose, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> okay, the old limp snap call. Gonna start out with a raise here. I think there's a chance that we should be limping this hand instead of raising with it, just because of the fact that I'm afraid if we min raise, he's gonna kind of try to put the gas, like his foot all the way on the gas and just shove a lot. And I don't wanna give him an extra 300 chips here. And I felt that because he had limped a good percentage of his hands on the button, that he would not automatically attack us doing it. But it uh, looks like he did. As, there's a chance if we min raise that he would have just folded or called, but we certainly don't know that, and I think uh, I think it's fine to try that out there. So blinds will be up in one minute to 200, 400. Uh, I think we can min raise this. Doesn't really threaten our stack too much to do it. We still have 4K behind even if he shoves. Blinds haven't gone up in a little bit. Going to just have to fold this here, unfortunately. Well, we can't say we didn't get it in good for the match. <laughs> we did lose a 75-25, so no matter what else happens, we at least we at least had them all in for the match as a favorite. So we at least had that. Going to just check it out here with uh, the old 6-3 ball. Uh, Going to be a tough post-flop decision here because I would bet, bet you that this guy's going to bet 600 chips as his bet size here. 300, not what I thought he was going to do. We can definitely call against 300. All he did was limp preflop, so he could definitely have us really beat, but no reason to think that's definitely happening at the moment. Also, there's some chance that with this particular opponent that if we check all flop, that he'll just check back if he doesn't have a pair on turn. Okay. Pretty good river card for us because if he didn't have us beat on the turn, he doesn't have us beat now. So we'll check back one more time to him, see what he does. If he has a king, he's going to be pretty empowered to bet here, you know, because there's no reason for him not to bet with a king at this point. And he, he might check back a king on the turn. But I think there's a possibility that this could be a bluff. He could just be trying to muscle us off here. We are getting a pretty good price. And if we call and lose, we still have enough chips to push fold on the button. So I think I'm going to actually try to call here and see if we will win. The sheriff is in town, boys and girls. Don't you forget it. Don't you forget it. Going to start out here with a... Could actually limp this as well. I think limping would also be fine, depending on how he's feeling over there. He seems like he's turned on the aggression a little bit. So against a guy who's being more aggressive, we're going to want to limp a hand like this and not raise it. But I didn't listen to my advice <laughs> in advance. Uh, I didn't listen to my advice in advance and got punished for it. All right, 
Queen three, gonna just fold the fever raises against the limp. I'm happily gonna just check. Let's see it flop. No pair for us, so looks like we'll probably just end up check folding. It's possible we have the best hand with queen high, but given the stakes are high, I don't want to check call with queen high here and just kind of like hope we have the best hand. Check check is interesting. I think I'm gonna start out with a bet here. It's possible that if he just has nothing, he'll just fold. You know, once again, kind of player based, or you know, it's kind of player oriented. Uh, I wouldn't bet there against a lot of people. I'm gonna fold here with Deuce far off suit. I think this guy's earned enough respect now that I can fold the old Deuce four ball. Uh, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't bet that turn with Queen three against everyone. But I thought against this guy that it would probably be fine. Once again, we'll probably be checking here if he limps, which would be fine with me. Just folding to the 3x, of course. Going to try to play a little bit faster in my big blinds. We get more hands here because that obviously benefits us slightly. Going to try limping with this in this spot. You know, I don't think that there's a reason to assume he's going to attack us every time we limp. And if he is, that's actually also fine with me because I'll just start limping everything. That's fine. So I don't think we have any reason to assume that his default strategy is going to necessarily include attacking the, the limp every time we make it. But... Uh, you know, most likely that given that he shoved there, he was most likely going to shove over a min raise anyway. And I don't want to fold a hand that good. So I think our strategy of limping there made sense. Going to just fold here with 10 3 offsuit. He's on a bit of a heater, but we really haven't had much to combat while he's been in heater mode. We really haven't gotten too much to work with here. I think I actually just fold this as well. I, I hate to give him so much initiative and momentum, but literally deuce three offsuit, I think has to get into the muck there. Hopefully we'll pick up a hand one of the times he's aggressive. This will certainly qualify. Watch, he goes back to walk time now. <laughs> he goes back to his old walk, walking boots. Oh, all right, what are we up against? The old Jack Trey, huh? We're going to need an ace, queen, or a 10. Oh, not 10, just an ace or a queen. Or a 10 now will do it also. Nope, not for us. So I think that, unfortunately, we didn't win, but I, I actually think we played pretty reasonably. Heads up, I, I actually think we played pretty well this entire match. And uh, some interesting hands, obviously, but, you know, I think uh, if you guys have any... If you guys have any questions on hand and stuff like that, let me know in the comments below. I, I think we played pretty well all in all. You know, I, I, I'm not too upset with anything. We got it in pretty good. We got it in with ace-8 against king-8, and we got it in with ace-10 against jack-3. I guess the second one wasn't for the match, but we got that one for the match. So I think all in all we played pretty well. We got lucky a couple, a couple times in, in some spots, but, you know, all in all, I'm pretty happy with that. So we started out today with... Started out today with 384.67, and we won 62.50 minus the buy-in. Nice, $422.17, back in the 400s, you know? We did some work today, we ran it up a little bit, two for two, episode 42, back to $422, that's great. Anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, especially if you enjoyed being a sit and go, deep stacked, any of that stuff, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video also, because hey, I like seeing you like the video, it encourages me to make more videos, so hey, like away. I'll be back with more videos very soon. Thanks so much for watching, guys, I will see you soon. Peace.